Hey, Paul, I see you got a copy of the 1941 horror classic, The Wolfman. Yeah, I do. It is impressive, isn't it? And arguably the greatest monster in Universal's entire lineup. Yes, yes it is. It is the greatest. Uh, you know, a fantastic movie. Obviously not like that horrible 2010 remake. It was god-awful. What? The remake? God-awful? Are you on meth? Meth? Then you must be on LSD. You must be on heroin if you think I'm on LSD for thinking you're on meth. All drug references aside, you, you do remember that 2010 remake. You do remember, don't you? Of course I remember the remake. I love Lawrence Talbot's backstory and tragic history way more than Larry Talbot creepily stalking girls in their windows through their dressing rooms. Nostalgia aside, The Wolfman 2010 is a superior film to the 1941 classic. What? Y you can't be serious. Oh, I am very serious. You know what? I guess we should do a sort of a wolf-by-wolf -wolf comparison, okay? I'll let you go first, okay? Deal. Look, I love Lon Chaney Jr.'s performance in the original. It's a classic of horror cinema, one of my favorite performances of all time. That being said, Benicio Del Toro's performance is actually a lot better. In the original, Lon Chaney Jr.'s Larry Talbot is way too happy, almost to the point where it becomes a caricature. And throw that into with the fact that he's just coming back to realizing that his brother has just been killed. When the 2010 remakes Lawrence Talbot comes back, he's devastated. He has this just soulful look of sorrow in his eyes throughout the entire film. Lawrence Talbot, the 2010 remake of The Wolfman, is a far darker and far more interesting character. So Benicio del Toro has a display of far wider array of emotions for this Lawrence Talbot. His backstory is a lot more interesting than the one from the original, where he hardly really has any backstory. I don't want to give any spoilers, I'll just leave it at that. And Lawrence Talbot has to deliver a lot more emotions in this version, and Benicio del Toro just completely knocks that out of the park. Benicio does a great job of appearing somber, sincere, tragic, angry, angsty, dismissive. He has to display a wide array of emotions, and mostly just to his facial expressions. I think Benicio Del Toro's best acting in the movie, while pretty hard to pick since his whole performance is pretty much Oscar-worthy in my opinion, is when he returns to Gwen in her antique shop to admit his feelings of romance for her. He delivers such sincerity in his voice and his facial expressions, I really do think that was the emotional height of the movie apart from, well, obviously Much like Benicio Del Toro, Anthony Hopkins also displays a far more interesting, far darker character in the remake than he did in the original. And on top of that, Sir John actually looks like he's supposed to be Larry's father in the remake. In the original, Claude Rains looks like he's, what, like five or six years older than Lon Chaney Jr.? I can never really buy it. In the remake, that's not the case. They give him a beer, they make his hair white, they give him like a bunch of wrinkles and scars. He's clearly his father. <laughs> anyway, I think Anthony Hopkins' performance is a lot more layered and he created a lot more developed character. I can't really go too far into his performance without really revealing spoilers, but I just want to say that they make him a very dark character, a very dark character that very much ties in with Lawrence's suffering, while still giving him his own sympathy. The universe in the Universal Remake of The Wolfman isn't very black and white, and even though there is a clear good and evil there, it's not really as simple as this guy's bad because he's bad, this guy's good because he's good. And that's one of the reasons why I love this movie. Again, I can't go too far into his character without revealing spoilers, but I will say that Anthony Hopkins created a very detailed, somewhat sympathetic, and very creepy and mysterious character in Sir John Talbot. And again, like Benicio Del Toro, it's a masterpiece of a performance that is criminally underappreciated. And finally, we get to the love interest, Gwen Conlon herself. And I have to say, even though the performances in the original were mostly great, Evelyn Anker sucked as Gwen Conniff. I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it, I know that's gonna cause controversy, she wasn't very good. She seemed really out of place in the movie, and like, she didn't really understand the film that she was in. She didn't have any chemistry with Lon Chaney Jr., and she just seemed like she wanted to get it over with. Plus, the whole romance seemed really half-assed in my opinion. Compare that to Emily Blunt, who was going all in with her portrayal of Gwen Conliffe, in the remake. 
Her version is a lot more sympathetic, she has a lot more backstory, her romance is very believable, and she just seems like a better person. She has a lot of chemistry with Del Toro, too. In fact, Emily Blunt does such a good job playing Gwen Conliffe that arguably she might even be a little bit more sympathetic than Lawrence. She goes through a lot more hardship in this movie than she did in the original, and she has a ton of character development, starting off as a little bit sort of dismissive of Lawrence and not really very empathetic, to possibly becoming one of the most empathetic and sympathetic characters in the entire film. I really understood and sympathized with her plight throughout the film, and she's going through just as much as Lawrence is going through. The ro this also has to do with the romance being brought more to a forefront in this film than it was in the original. Most of the time, I don't like these romances in fantasy sci-fi movies. I feel like they're very half-assed, don't have a lot of development, and the two leads don't have a lot of chemistry. In the Wolfman remake, on the other hand, I never felt this was the case. The two leads have a ton of chemistry, they really do have a reason to love each other, as they are very supportive of one another, and really come to understand each other over the course of the film. So, in my opinion, Emily Blunt as Gwen Conliffe flat out curb stomps Evelyn Anchors as Gwen Conliffe. I do agree with you that the story is classic, Paul, but on the other hand, the story is very, very straightforward in the original. It's very straightforward. It pretty much just revolves around, Larry goes back to his house after his brother's been killed, you forget about his brother getting killed after about two seconds, he gets bitten by a werewolf, and the whole town hates him. There isn't really a lot of backstory for a lot of the characters, and the only characters that really go through a lot of development are Larry and Sir John. In the remake, on the other hand, there is a ton of backstory for almost all of these characters, and every one of them goes through some significant development throughout the film. Like I said, there's a far more darker tone in the script, and there's a very interesting subplot of, about Lawrence Talbot being sent to an asylum when he was younger. I can't go too into it without revealing spoilers yet again, even though I would love to, because it's told really well, and really develops this interesting theme about sort of the natural world being almost less savage than the civilized world, even though the natural world is basically the representation of the Wolfman himself, which would come off as the most savage creature in the entire film. But arguably, the doctors in the asylum that we see later are perhaps even more sadistic than the Wolfman. They don't... they aren't beasts. These are like normal human beings, and they do some horrible, horrible things for a main protagonist, simply out of pleasure, to be honest. The 2010 Wolfman also offers a great plot twist, an infinitely superior ending to the original, and some surprisingly deep themes on fatherhood, the natural world versus the civilized world, lies, uh, guilt, and a whole bunch of other themes. I'll send you a link to Review Reviewer 1's review of The Wolfman if you want some more detailed analysis of these themes that we see in the movie. It's in the link below, check it out. It's far better than any of them. Look, Paul, I know it seems really unfair for me to compare the action from a movie from 2010 to a movie from 1941, but... The Wolfman only kills one person in the 1941 movie! And... It's off screen! You don't even see it! I mean, is it that much to ask to kill like two or three people? I mean, Frankenstein killed two or three people in Bride of Frankenstein, and that came out like, what, five or six years before this movie? I mean, I guess it's not that big of a deal. They might have just been going from a more psychological thriller standpoint, but as far as action goes, you really can't compare the 2010 version to the 1941 version. The 2010 Wolfman has hundreds of lungs being ripped open, heads being decapitated, faces being slashed open, stomachs being slashed open. Oh, and to top that off with a badass werewolf fight at the end where one of them catches on fire. Do I really need to say more? The atmosphere in the remake is better than the atmosphere in the original for two reasons. One, the atmosphere in the remake showcases a lot more different kinds of sets. It shows a beautiful shot under the uh, under the Tower of London. It shows some beautiful shots of the London rooftops, including one of my favorite all-time film shots where the Wolfman's hanging over a gargoyle overlooking London, and you can see uh, Big Ben over on the other side. It's a fantastic shot. A lot of shots of uh, foggy moors. There's some. Uh, there's a waterfall shot. There's this great um, asylum set that they use. There's. There's just so there's this great variety of sets in the remake, in 
in the original they only have like two or three different sets that they use. And I do get that it was done on a far lower budget and was done over 60 years before the remake, but at the same time, Bride of Frankenstein used a ton of different sets and locations and different kinds of cinematography, and again, they came out like five or six years before The Wolfman did. So, I don't really think it's that much of an excuse. Again, the cinematography in the original, very good, but I just think that the cinematography in the remake is a little better. And the second reason is that we really don't really see a lot of cinematography like we saw in The Wolfman today. The closest we get would be crap-ass shit like the 2004 Van Helsing, which is really just The Mummy, but with a different paint job. The, the really creepy style of almost foggy moors and these sort of like pinkish red sunsets, we don't really see a lot of that these days. It's mostly just throwing CGI and overly bright shit at us, like the Avengers or Transformers, so it was pretty unique to see that in a 2010 movie. Hi. Okay, Will. You've had your turn. Now it's my turn. I even took notes because I wanted to answer your point. I wore my glasses just to make myself look more intelligent while I do my arguments. Uh, now, I'm going to try to exactly follow your point. So, okay, now, you said um, Lon Chaney's character, when he comes home, he's almost too happy. He said, um, but you. I think you only really see him smile the one time when he's driving in the car, you know, with the chauffeur, family chauffeur, and he's, and he tells him, there's uh, Sir Tabu Castle there, and he, you know, he kind of pats him on the back and says, you know, he, he has a smile, because he's coming home after a long estrangement, okay? In the original, you, they kind of set the, the, the backstory that he has been estranged from his father, and basically even Sir uh, Sir John Talbot even mentions to Larry how the Talbots have a tradition of the old, of the father favoring the older son, and kind of the, with the second sons being kind of neglected, and so and you can tell there, this you know Larry is coming home you know, even though it's after the death of his brother, of course, which is a sad occasion, of course, and he's come but he's coming home to reconcile with his father to actually you know reunite the family and be closer and end this estrangement. And and even Sir John says, listen, we'll try to do better than in than this tradition of being, you know, of the Talbot men, you know, the older son and the and the uh, the father being closer and the younger son being ignored. So that's why. So I don't think Lawrence is happy so much. He's happy, although he is happy to be home and and back in the bosom of his family with his father, even though this is a tragedy that that brought him back. But he's 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 there for that. Okay, now. As far as um, Lawrence in the remake, he's coming home after the death, after the, the, the basically the murder or the butchering of his brother. Okay, he's coming home from, from that, and and after I saw the um, the uh, the uh, uncut version of the Wolfman, uh, the 2010 version, and they kind of explain why he's been an actor and then he comes home, you know, for that, but. I just thought you you have a, a, a closer bond with um, Sir John uh, in the remake. You know, Lawrence. You know, you, you can see when he comes home, he's you know his father's his father looks totally distraught and looks like he's completely out of it and he's living the, the top of the hall as a as a mess. Okay, and you can tell there's kind of a, a little estrangement. For in the original, you can tell there was that exchange, but they they promised to kind of clear the air and be closer as a family. So that, I don't think he was so Lawrence Talbot in the original was so happy. It's it's more that he's happy to be home and back with his father and from after being in America for so long. And and even though it's a tragedy that brought him back, he's happy to be home with his father and, and reconcile with his father and hopefully get closer. So I think that's why you see him being hopeful. Okay, you know, even though the his brother, I'm sure he he mourns the death of his brother, but you know he's happy to be home and hopefully get close, you know, come home and be closer to his father, and that's you know that's the whole point of that. So that's why I think he's you see him be a little bit more hopeful. Okay, now something else you said uh, that Lawrence has a better backstory. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, 
has a better backstory. Larry, uh, see, in the without spoiling it, uh, bunch. T I, I know the the backstory that you're talking about, and I know they tried to kind of make it a little bit different. Okay, but I think that would, uh, the, the, you could tell this script, the script for this movie, The Wolfman, the remake, was rewritten a, a bunch of times. <laughs> And actually, they shut down production because I think they, at one point they fired a director, and then they shut down for a little while, and then they had to get a new director. And, and but you can tell that the backstory and stuff is kind of you know made up. Like I said, the original backstory for the original movie was him being estranged from his father, you know, because of that you know the topic tradition of favoring the older son versus the new younger son, and that's why he left. You know, you know they try to make it a little bit too cultivated. In the original, in the remake, like, like all this, you know, back, you know, backstory is fine, but when you make it, you know, all this, all this, you know, this stuff that you got to, you have to explain and flashback, and and then they kind of tease you with it, and then you have to, you know, it gets a little bit too cultivated to me, okay, in my opinion. I like it was, it was a simple reason why he was strange from his father, you know, his father favored the older son, and the younger son had to find his own way, and then upon the tragedy, he has to come home, and then he promised to be closer with his father. It's nice and simple, straightforward, and not all these the psychological issues floating in the air. Okay? And as far as performance goes, Lawrence, uh, I did Lawrence Taylor, Lon Chaney Jr. was absolutely fantastic as, as, uh, as Larry Talbot. He really made you feel for him, for his character. And I, I've said this before in past reviews, he really, really made you feel for his character. And as far as Benicio Del Toro is concerned, he is a good actor, and I can't take nothing away from him, but it seems like part of the movie he was kind of sleepwalking his way through the parts part of the movie like you know when you know it's not that he's a bad actor but it just seems like he he was sleepwalking through parts his performance was okay it wasn't the best thing and like i said it looked like he he it looked like sometimes he slept walk through part of the movie like he wasn't giving it his all okay and that could have been again partly because like then the, the movie went through so many script revisions and stuff but that's just my opinion about that. Okay. You know, now, as far as, um, okay, as far as the, uh, the, um, you say the, uh, romance between, um, uh, Lawrence and, um, and Gwen Cuff character. Now, of course, in the original, you know, you could say he's sort of a peeping Tom, but that's, a, you know, you have to take into account, again, the times that the movie was made. That was a, sort of a cute way of meeting each other. Okay, even though it is kind of creepy in, in these, this in modern context, it's, it's kind of creepy. <laughs> but back then, it was considered cute, and it did it accomplished what they set out to in the script that he would that he would win a date with Gwen. Gwen would go out with him, leading of course to you know the uh, the incident. <laughs> put it that way. So it kind of served for that purpose. Now, as far as the, between Gwen and Lawrence in the remake. I don't buy any romance between them. You know why I don't buy it? Because <laughs> I think for one, except for one scene where they're skipping rocks on the water, and he talks about, they talk about, uh, they talk to each other about, I think about their, um, about his acting and about his brother and stuff briefly. I don't see where this great attraction, and why would she be looking for romance? Her fiance just died. I mean, savagely butchered. Why would she be looking, she wouldn't be looking for any kind of romance. Okay? So, I don't buy, I, sh sure, I could buy her being concerned because that's her fiance's brother. And when things start going wacky for him, of course she's concerned about him. But a great love for him? Uh, I'm sorry, that I don't buy. And as good an actress as Emily Blunt is, and she completely sells it as best she could with the, with the kind of, with the, the weak script, I, I still don't buy it, okay? And like I said, nothing through no fault of Emily Blunt. I, th I think she tries to sell it as much as she can. And I think she does the best she could. But I don't buy that romance between her and... Lawrence, I'm sorry. Concern, yes. Romance, I'm sorry. A fiance had just got butchered, absolutely butchered. And sure, she would care about his brother because his brother got attacked. Okay, and of course she would care. She would be a, a cold, unfeeling woman if she didn't feel anything for him. Of course, it's her brother's fiance, you know, fiance's brother. But her fiance just passed. She's not going to fall in love with Lawrence Talbot. Lawrence Talbot that fast. I'm sorry. That's uh, that I don't buy. That romance is part. Yes, I think. Uh, Emily Blunt gave a far better performance than um, 
Evelyn, Evelyn Anchors, and I think Evelyn Anchors' character was terribly underwritten in the original, but, and I definitely think Emily Bunn gives a better performance, but the romance part, I'm not, I'm sorry, I just, I'm not buying it, okay, I'm sorry, she's, I don't buy that, you know, kind of instant romance thing between the, the two, this instant connection. I, I'm sorry. I just don't buy that part. Now, now you say Anthony Hopkins' character plays a darker character than, than the Claude Rains did in the original. And also you said uh, you don't buy it because Claude Rains looked like he was maybe about five or six years older than uh, Lon Chaney uh, Jr. Like I said, I, I could see that. I could also, but I could see where you could say that. But Lon, uh, Claude Rains to me did come off as an aristocratic and, and as an authority figure. So I could buy him being, you know, despite the real life ages, I could buy him being um, Lon Chaney Jr.'s father. I, I totally saw, even though the height difference, you, know, you kind of have to spend belief, unless you want to believe that Lawrence's tail, Lawrence Talbot's mother was <laughs> about as tall as he was or, so, or somewhere close to that. But in any event, I the reason I buy there and, and why I think Sir John Talbot's character in the original is better than the remake is because because the two totally different it's like almost like the same and that in the 2010 remake these two different characters okay now you can say it's oh because of psychological reasons or or but no it's t it seems to me like they made it, they they tried to um what they thought was oh okay we've got Anthony Hopkins this great actor which he is and instead of just giving him the same type of part that John Talbot's character was in the first movie. They said, "No, we're gonna, we're gonna change it around because we have the great uh, Anthony Hopkins here." Okay, so we're gonna make his character act one way in part of the movie, then act a totally different way, like, like you know, just completely do a 180 in the second part of the movie. Which, and, and, and you look at the movie, and you go, "Where did that come from?" His character was acting one way in the beginning of the movie, then all of a sudden he completely flipped to a, almost a 180. Okay, and it just, you know, for no reason. But I, and again, I think the reason they did it was because they figured they had, they had the great Sir Anthony Hopkins here. We got to have him do more than just be a supportive father, you know, ca character like in the remake, like Claude Rains was. And the reason I like Claude Rains' performance in the original is because he was, like I said, in the beginning of the movie, he tried to get close. He was going to make a promise to Lawrence that he would be closer to him and stop that tradition of, of Lawrence, of, um, Talbot men being strange, you know, distant to their second sons and favoring the older son. Now that the older brother was dead, they would try to make peace and, and be closer. And so what happens later in the movie, it makes that part almost makes that part a real tragedy because there was a promise of coming together. And then what happens at the end of the film, at the conclusion of the film, makes it even that much more of a tragedy, a more deeper scar and a lasting memory. And it makes it more of a tragedy. And like I said, Anthony Hopkins' character, just to me, 180, which was totally ridiculous. It's just like I said, he acted one way in the beginning of the movie and then just completely did a 180 in the second part of the movie. He said, oh my, what the, what the hell happened to his character? And it was just, it was like I said, and I guess that partly had to do with the script being remade a, a, a ton of times and and no, no clear transition to that, to me. It just, he was one way one, one minute, and then another way the next minute, the next half of the movie, which it just it was very confusing. And, and that's why I, I favor the original portrayal of, of John Sir John Talbot by Claude Rains. He was a stern father, and when Lawrence started flipping out, he was giving him the tough love, and but he was giving him the tough love because he loved him, and he wanted to get him, you know, shake him out of his, his craziness, according to him, and, and make him, you know, face reality. And again, which makes the ending of the movie that much more of a tragedy. Okay, now, now, okay, now, what else? Right, now, let's see, what else are we talking about? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, and the second, and another thing about Sir Anthony Hopkins, to me, he sort of completely hammed it up in the last part of the film. This completely, it was, Talk about chewing the scenery. I mean, he completely chewed the scenery. And, and again, a werewolf, I'm, all I'm going to say is this, a werewolf versus a bear, put it that way. But that great scene that you talk about, uh, uh, Will, 
uh, a werewolf versus a bear. Okay? Versus a care bear. Let me put it that way. But I was following that. Okay. And he did ham it up. Okay. Okay, and like I said, Claude Rains, his character, like I said, he played him stern and 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 sympathetic and, str and strong when he had to be to Lawrence, to snap Lawrence out of his craziness, according to him. And, of course, again, what happens at the end makes it that much more of a tragedy and, you know, ugh. Okay, now, 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 I agree with you, again, I said about Evelyn Lakers being a weaker, her character was underdeveloped, I agree with you that way, and, and Emily Blunt is a better actress, okay, and, but again, I don't buy that romance between her and Lawrence, I mean, just, I'm sorry, the brother was brutally butchered, okay, there's no way in the world she's going to flip around, sure, she'll care about him after he's attacked, but she's not going to fall in love with him that quick, I'm sorry, that I don't buy, okay, okay, now, uh, oh yeah, you said the backstory, yeah, I think the, the backstory is pretty straightforward, like I said, Lawrence comes home from an estrangement, he meets Gwen, if, you know, it's cute, and the story is more straightforward, and you know it gets written, and then you know everything else that happens after that. And but I think the original, the remake tried to do too much backstory, too much things that they kept showing you slowly in flashbacks, and you, you try to figure out what exactly happened. And and then, like I said, you could just tell that the script is uneven, and that it was remade a bunch of times, you know, rewritten a bunch of times because the tone of the movie kind of sh it, it shifts. And it's one thing in the, in the beginning of the movie, then a completely different thing in the second half of the movie. Okay, and uh, oh yeah, the plot the plot twist, which is uh, like I said, I I liked Sir John's ca character in the original. Okay, and I think like I said, if, if in the 2010 remake, if they would have just, I think that, again, the reason why they put that twist in there is because they had Anthony Hopkins playing the part. Okay, even now, even though back then. Claude Rains, I think, was a was a you know was a famous actor back then, but I think back then they were more willing to do that you know like I said, I think because the original you know the remake Anthony Hopkins like I said is a is a big time actor, and instead of having him play the part the same way in the remake, which I think would have made for a better story, I think just I mean they put that you know that werewolf versus werewolf in there, be, but I think it would have been better if they would have had Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins is a seasoned actor. And if he could have played the part the same way, if his part was written the same way as the original Sir John Talbot, because, again, what happens ultimately at the end of the movie is a tragedy, and it happens because of what Sir John has to do, okay? And I think they could have done that in the remake, okay? And But they chose not to. They chose to go a completely, you know, different way and put that plot twist in there, which, to me, completely ruined the character of John Talbot to me, okay? His character was a great strength in the first original movie, and this one, like I said, the character does a 180 in the second half of the movie. Okay, so you don't. Care. To me, I didn't care what happened after that. After he did this 180. Okay. Anyway, uh, as far as the killing is concerned, uh, killings or murder or gore in the movie. I like the gore, the killings in the uh, in the remake. I admit that because you know, because I'm a, I like to see things get slashed up. <laughs> And stuff, but you have to think about the original, about the time that was made. Even though he killed only one person, like you said, <laughs> okay. But you have to realize in the time, the context of the time that was made in the 1940s, okay. Now I know, like you said, you said Frankenstein monster killed more people, but remember the Frankenstein monster basically went from place to place, and basically he had a whole town after him. So he went from place to place, and his character was meant to be that, okay. Lawrence Tobin's character in the original. Uh, hey, was you know his character, what well, uh, tragic a hero basically, you know hero basically turned monster, okay, and there was only a few nights that basically he that he was the beast, okay, and without spoiling, there was only there were certain things that happened, and and, and think about it, when he went uh, prowling as the Wolfman, there was only one person that he really came upon in that first outing, okay, and then you know, the subsequent nights. Certain things happened without spoiling that prevented him from killing anybody. Okay, and, and remember there was this big, you know, hunt on the town for them. There was not. It wasn't like in the remake where basically they did have people looking for him. But actually, yeah, actually they did have. I'm, I'm sorry. Let me back this up a bit. You have to think about it. In the in the in the original, 
his character, something happened to him without spoiling it, <laughs> that kind of prevented him from from killing more people. Okay, something did happen to him in the remake. Of course, he had more of a chance to kill more people, you know, because there were people out actually actively hunting for this char you know, for this character or this monster. Okay, so of course, and again, you have to take into the context of the times. Okay, and I'm sure back then they had, the, you know, the I forgot what they called they, they had it, the ratings code. So I think there was only there's so much so much gore you could show back then. I'm sure if the restrictions were a little bit lifted and the movie was longer than it was, because the movie is like it's only 81 minutes. I'm sure you would have saw more killing from from the Wolfman character in this one. Of course, in the remake, it's almost two hours long, and of course, modern orange is used to gore and stuff. And so of course they're gonna throw in as much gore as they can. Okay, so that's why I don't, you know, disclaim that. Okay, now. Let's see what else okay okay I'm gonna wrap up here <laughs> okay uh, oh yeah and another reason why uh, I think probably the gore was limited as well because I think originally as written the uh, original script for the Wolfman the 1941 version they were gonna have it be a story where it was all in his head they were never really gonna ever show you the Wolfman character okay they, were, they wanted to kind of play it up as a psychological thing that he was was basically going mad and thinking he was a wolfman, but ultimately he wasn't. Okay, but you know, of course, they you know they Hollywood rewrote, rewrote the script and of course made it to be him actually, you know, physically being a wolfman. So that's why again, again, you have to take in the context of the time that was made in the 40s. And even though I know you keep referring to Frankenstein, the Frankenstein monster was meant to be destructive and and being after being rejected by his master to go off and. And, and basically explore the town. And the Wolfman, he was kind of restricted into that one little village, and he only had a couple of nights where he uh, where he had basically the chance to go out, <laughs> basically. <laughs> okay, so that kind of explains that. Okay, now. Now. Okay, yeah. Again, like I said, 81 minutes versus almost two hours. Of course, so you had more things that you could throw in that movie as well. That's it. Okay. Um, Okay, and then you also say the atmosphere was better in the remake. Of course, in the remake, he gets basically, you know, Lawrence goes from the mental asylum to all of, you know, from Tower of London, from London to back to Talbot Manor. Of course, he goes around the Gypsy Village. Of course, in this, in the original, of course, he was in the, in the town where Talbot Castle was, and of course, that little town, and that's where everything happened. He didn't get a chance to go anywhere else. Okay, everything was confined in that one little set, but the atmosphere, as far as the, the you know, the creepy forest where he, the wolfman hunted, you know, of course that was great, but you know, the black and white, the fog and the moonlight and, and you know, that was, that was the, that was all the atmosphere you really needed. Plus, you know, Talbot Hall and stuff. And it was, you know, this show, the gypsy village, you know, there's a couple of locations, different locations, but of course the remake is showing modern London. Well, not modern London, but you know, 18, whatever it was, London. And of course, Big Ben and everything else. Of course, and then you saw Lawrence had to go from London all the way back to Tower Hawk Castle, so you did, you did get a bunch. And then, of course, you know, going from one place to the other. Of course, so in the remake, they have more locations, so I'll give you that. They have more opportunities to go other places because Lawrence had to be taken from one place to another. So, of course, but in the remake, in the original, of course, he was all confined to one area. Okay? So, um, I think that's about it. But so, that's the end of our debate. Um, which film did you like more and why? Please type in the comments which film you like more and why, who you think did a better argument for their film being better, uh, points that you agree with with us, points that you disagree with us, maybe suggestions for future episodes. I mean, we already have some ideas for future film fights, but we would love to have new ones. Um, I love the 2010 remake, and I love the 1941 version, and I can definitely understand why Paul likes the 1941 version more. But in my opinion... They're both great movies, but I gotta give the cake to the 2010 film. It's one of the best films that I've seen in, in years. Definitely of the new millennium, it's one of the best films. And I really think that it's something of a treasure. But I do definitely respect Paul's opinion, and he gives a lot of really good points for why the 1941 film is superior. With that, I'm Will of the Movie Doctor Fall. Subscribe to my channel. Signing out. In, in conclusion, um, again, why I think... The original, which, okay, excuse me, <laughs> I got where I had it. The original, The Wolfman, is a better movie. 
basically for me because uh, it's 81 minutes, it's straightforward. You've got a great performance from Lon Chaney Jr. as Larry Talbot, aka the Wolfman. Claude Rains, I think, gives a great, excellent performance as a as the you know as the star firm John Talbot. And in this movie, John Talbot is what he is. He's not in the, like in the original does a 180 at one point in the movie. He is what he is. Okay, and which makes what happens at the end of the movie, without spoiling it, that much more of a tragedy. And I think, yeah, uh, in this movie, you really, really feel for Lawrence Talbot's character. And also, I forget to add this, and I, I'm sorry for this, the character of Maliva, the gypsy woman. Now, they have the Maliva in the remake, but she's only there, in, I think, in one scene, actually, maybe two scenes the most. Okay, but she's more prevalent in this movie, and she also adds a lot to the sympathy for Lawrence Talbot's character, because she's the one that breaks everything down to him, and tells him exactly what's going to happen to him, and so you ultimately feel, you know, you have that sympathy for him, of what's going to happen to him, and like I said, I also described this, and I did a review of this movie before, which makes this movie ultimately a tragedy, because you have a good man who does the right thing, and gets cursed for it, okay, and it's straightforward, it's 81 minutes, black and white, Excellent, and the special effects for its time, you know, the makeup is really good for its time. I, I'd say the remake has great special effects, too. I like the Wolfman, the Lawrence, Ta Lawrence Talbot's character, how he looked. I like that, how he looked in that movie, in the remake. But I think the story, the pacing was completely off in that in the original, in the remake, excuse me. The pacing was completely off. Um, basically, uh, it's just, it wasn't, like I said, you could tell that the script was rewritten because... Like I said, the movie's whole tone changes in the second half, and to me, it just makes for an uneven movie. Okay, no, no don't get me wrong. I watched the um, the unrated version, and I gave it a better rating than the the version I saw in the theater because I thought it explained a little things things a little bit more. But this movie, this one is the the original is the best. I'm sorry, uh, and I almost take up 25 minutes. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, but I had to refute you. <laughs> okay, and let me know again, like. Uh, the movie Doctor Full <laughs> says, uh, "Let me know what you think of who you think arguments is better, or, or you know, whichever one you think his argument is better or mine." Okay, feel free to leave comments down below. And if, like I said, we'll do more of these. Okay, this is like the pilot one. We're just testing our testing our way here. And I think I talk way much more than him. Okay, but I want to get all my points in, and then we'll get better as we go along. Okay, and anyway, let me know what you think, and let us know what other movies you would like us to debate against each other. Okay, so if you're free to leave comments down below, this is Trey Passer for The Movie Doctor. Well, I'll leave a link to his channel somewhere in here so you can sub to him. And he's a great fellow YouTuber and thanks him for suggesting this. It's, it's his, it was his idea ultimately, so I give him all the credit. And this is Trey Passer saying so long and take care.